But coming up right away, Fayal Doshi introduces us to Shanice Jan Muhammad, an artist who transposes her unique heritage and colorful experiences into a form of poetry and brings us the power of the spoken word. We have swallowed black stones washed up on the shore, and in the heavy pit of our stomachs, we idolize our fear. Spoken word is an art form that rarely gets mainstream recognition. One young South Asian female, Shneez Jan Muhammad, is breaking down barriers and showing us just that through the love of poetry. Writing poetry became a natural journey for the author, poet, and spoken word artist whose love for this art form was first introduced in her father's household and ignited her to illuminate the words off the page. I didn't know what spoken word was when I first um, was introduced to it and it was through my drama class in high school. One day we had an assignment where we had to write our own scripts and perform them and that's when I decided I'm going to do a poetry script and it turned out to be a form of spoken word. Sitting in the TTC, donning paisley neckties, writing notes and lock lock locking eyes. The graduate of fine arts and creative writing at Guelph Humber has used the power of words to epitomize what makes her unique. I think that's the beauty of spoken word is that everybody's unique and that's what's so celebrated about the form is that uniqueness is valued. So just by being myself, as cliche as it may sound, that's my unique angle, really. Uh, and I think it's also that, you know, I have uh, a very different history because I was born here. My parents are from East Africa and my ancestry is Indian. And I'm also a Muslim woman, but I'm not limited to my faith in the sense that I um, have learned and researched other religions and have great respect for them. So all those elements play into my work and I think that's just uh, what spoken word is. It's how you can bring your own experiences to the stage. I just picked up the uh, other part of it as well. She continues to explore different avenues to showcase spoken word. She put her thoughts down on paper and created Bleeding Light, which is essentially about her guzzles. She wants every poem to come at you like an arrow. I always saw the guzzle as a form that's sung, and I didn't know that there was an English manifestation of this form. So it intrigued me. We all had to write a guzzle. My first one was terrible, um, and she told me. And uh, she said that she thought that the form would work well with my topics. So I stuck to the form, and for my uh, master's thesis, uh, my mini thesis as it was called, I actually wrote a collection of English guzzles under the mentorship of a poet, Kuldeep Gill. For an art form that is gaining popularity through its words that are induced with their own actions, every poet who is attempting to hone their craft should remember this. Continue to remind yourself that you have a unique perspective and a unique angle and only you can write the way that you write. Um, and also to not think that words are not powerful, you know, because they're like, oh, well, they're words, what difference will they make? But, you know, you look at Martin Luther King Jr., you look at Gandhi, you look at uh, people who have really made a difference in this world. What do we remember about them? In addition to their actions, it's their words. For more information on Bleeding Light, feel free to visit www.tsarbooks.com. From India, a string of desert beads. My hands dive into the clay of no land. I am a child. I am a child of contraband.